Yo, so I've finished the uh, Japanese work visa application, so now it's time to share what I went through. So, in order to start this whole process, you first need to have the Japanese uh, certificate of eligibility uh, that your employer would have uh, organized with you uh, and sent to you to your home address. So once you've got that original document, the next part is to find out how you apply for your work uh, visa. So for me, this was just looking at uh, Google to find out my embassy or consulate in Japan that's in my area. So I searched Japan embassy consulate Melbourne and the first result is what I'm looking for, Consulate General of Japan Melbourne. So if I go into this link, uh, the first thing I'll find is on the navigation bar we've got visa and travel. So this is what I'm looking for as I'm trying to find out my visa information. So if I click on this, we can then see this page load up and this has all the details that are required for my work visa application. So as you can see, list of required documents to apply for visa, except for tourists, because I'm uh, doing a work visa, I'm looking for a business visa, and you know, I had to pay attention to this because uh, they no longer process visas at the consulate or embassy directly. Instead, I had to go through another agency in order to do this whole process. And then down below here, we have the required documents. So here we can see a list of 11 types of documents. And if we look at the right side, we have short term and long term. As I am going for the long term, I'm going to focus on this section. So the first document that I require for long term is a valid passport. And this is just providing your original passport and one photocopy. Uh, for me, this was a black and white. And that was it for that document. The next part is Australian visa. Because I'm born here in Australia, my nationality is Australian, I don't need to provide this. Uh, then we have the visa application form. So this one, we can see that I've got an option for PDF or Excel. I just downloaded the PDF one, printed it out and, you know, hand filled it out. So in this visa application form, you can expect that you'll need to provide a photo in the right specifications as uh, printed out here, 45 by 35 millimeters. And then if we scroll down, we have our passport details. <clears throat> So in here, uh, we just give in the usual details like our surname, name, uh, our date of birth, our place of birth, our sex, our marital status, our nationality or citizenship. And then down here was one that I wasn't too sure of when I first read this uh, application form, ID number issued to you by your government. In Australia, we don't really have an ID when we're like born really. Uh, but once I confirm what this was, this could be like your driver's license number, and that's what I put in here. And then you have passport type, for me just ordinary, and my passport number. Place of issue and issuing authority, as I'm in Australia, this was just putting Australia or AUS into these fields. Uh, this is the same as what you see on your passport, so for me this was AUS. The next part was the date of issue and expiry, which you will also find on your passport. <clears throat> so that is the passport section. The next section is uh, regarding your uh, reason to going to Japan. So for me, the purpose of visit was to work and the intended length of stay, I wasn't too sure exactly what to reference for this. So I used my certificate of eligibility validity period as the reference, which was five years. Uh, then we have the next part, which is when and how are you going to get to Japan? So for this part, you can put in, uh, you know, uh, temporary details or, you know, just details that you're uh, thinking that you'll be arriving in Japan with. So here we put in our date of arrival in Japan, our port of entry and the name of our airline or ship. So for me, what I did was just go onto um, you know other Google flights or uh, airline company that can you know fly from your uh, city to Japan. So I just put in uh, the dates and the port that it will arrive at and the airline uh, plane number. Uh, so this can be all just be 
uh, temporary details because you might not have actually you know booked in those tickets yet or your company is actually booking those tickets for you and you haven't gotten those details yet so you can just put in some uh, temporary information in here just to get past this visa application stage the next part is to uh, put down your itinerary uh, so this is this part is where you're going to be staying. Uh, my company provided me with a temporary address, so that's what I put in here. Uh, and also the date of my previous stay in Japan and how many days it took. Uh, next part is just about your home information. So <clears throat> your residential address out of your current uh, residential area in your home country and your contact details. <clears throat> Then some information about your current employment, which here is uh, what you're currently doing in your current uh, home country and who is employing you in your home country. Then after that, we have uh, this section. Because I'm coming by myself, my partner and occupation details aren't required. And then the next part is guarantor or reference in Japan. So this for me was my uh, employer. So they gave me their details for this. So as they are a company, I just have to provide name, address, and relationship to applicants. Uh, the other details are only for people or person. <clears throat> uh, uh, yeah. And then the next section is the inviter. Because this is the same as my guarantor, I put the same details as I did for the guarantor section. And finally, we have this section which uh, checks if you've committed any crimes. <clears throat> so, you know, have you been convicted, sentenced, imprisoned, deported, uh, done drug offense, prostitution, trafficking? Uh, for me, this was all no, but if you did say yes to any of these, then you have to provide details in this box below. And finally, uh, it's the date of application. So putting in the date that I filled this out and signing it. And that was all that was it for the visa application form. So if we go back, <clears throat> we have a look at what's next. Next one is one standard passport photo, which is just to be put on your visa application form. And if we go down one more, the next one is the certificate of ERFS. So the certificate of ERFS is a document that is uh, created or uh, given to you by your employer. So they have to uh, do in some registration for uh, this particular document and they'll give you uh, a file that you can print out uh, to attach to your visa application. Uh, so I'm not too sure if this has a standard look, uh, but for me, uh, if I go to this site, it takes you to this Japanese site, and yeah, this you don't have to really worry about because your employer would fill this out for you and provide it to you. The next part is the certificate of eligibility. Quite simple, this was the prerequisite before you can start this uh, work application visa. and. Yeah, you'll have that already. And the last one is a support letter from the same sponsor if your CAE was issued more than three months before the application date. Uh, since mine was nice and fresh, uh, this wasn't an issue for me and I didn't need this. So <clears throat> in summary, all I had to provide was a passport, my photocopy of that passport, my visa application form, a passport photo for that visa application form, the ARFS file or document, and my certificate of eligibility. And that was all it took. Um, so they gave me an estimate of how long this would take uh, to process of five to 14 days, but the reality was it took uh, three days. So it got processed on the same day and I was able to pick up my passport with the visa uh, stuck onto it, along with the certificate of eligibility on uh, the third day. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope that was uh, useful and that's pretty much it uh, for the work visa application. Quite simple straight and quite straightforward. That's it. All right, catch you later. Bye-bye.